sing it out. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is tramping out the vintage where the graves of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword.
Cause it's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise to you only Come on, you get life You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great. Every 
every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing holy, holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show. and I am here to welcome you with my beautiful and lovely wife, Bridget McCormick. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today in our worship service. Um, I just had a little thought to um, encourage you that although we're in this still in this pandemic mode, we are so blessed that we can come together to worship God in spirit and in truth. We can hear each week we've heard great messages. We've sang songs and spiritual songs. And most of all, we've come together to remember Jesus. And that's the reason why we're still worshiping Jesus, even during these times, during this pandemic times. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. I found this passage in uh, Psalm 121 that encouraged me so much. And I wanted to share it with uh, all of us this morning as we begin our worship service. Psalm 121, starting in verse 1, it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, we can all use a little help every now and again. I know I can. I need help with, with so many areas of my life. And a lot of times I can tend to bury my head and just try to figure everything out on my own. It's reassuring and so encouraging to recognize the ultimate helper that I need and maybe the ultimate helper that all of us need is really our mighty and awesome God. And as Bridget alluded to, that's really why we're here this morning is to be encouraged by one another's participation in the worship service, but to also worship God together. I'm going to say a prayer and we're going to just continue in our worship service together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you for being the ultimate helper for each and every one of us. Bless this service as only your powerful hand can do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you at the end of service. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes and fights for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will Hope will arise. 
Sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Oh, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. storm louder Good morning, church. I'm super excited about our upcoming summer sermon series entitled Heroes of the Faith. In this series, we are going to look at a few legendary heroes of the Bible. And for thousands of years, their faith has been talked about among the generations. But the true story of their world-renowned courage lies in our extraordinary God who took them from weakness to strength, seeing the potential he created within them. I believe that God is looking for some modern-day heroes. In fact, God is always on the lookout for heroes. In Psalm Chapter 16 and verse 3, the Bible says the godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. In Psalm 101 and verse 6, the Bible says I will make the godly of the land my heroes. The Bible says that those who are living a godly life, are God's heroes. In fact, God takes pleasure in them. We are going to look at some great men and women in the Bible and see for ourselves why God took pleasure in them with their faith. Listen, our faith and our trust in God plays a huge role in pleasing the Lord. And yet, as we make this journey in our Christian life, there are times when our faith is challenged. There are times 
in our faith when our faith may seem a little weak. We realize that it may not be at the level you will want it to be or at the level when you first came to the Lord, when you were overjoyed and excited and you realize that you need a little boost to your faith, a little jump start to your faith. You need your personal faith revived. You need your faith energized. You need your faith refreshed. You need your faith to be reawakened and perked up. You need your faith to be uplifted and encouraged. I know I need that at times in my life. Well, what is faith? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. You know, this is a scripture that most of us are familiar with. In other words, we've heard this scripture before. And yet God wants his heroes to put their faith and trust in him. In fact, the Bible says the ancients were commended for their godliness. They were commended for their faith in God. You know, I love the message translation of what this scripture reads. The Bible says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. It's the act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. You know, let me give you another definition of faith that you can meditate on and put into practice. Someone once said faith is having the courage to let God have control. That is what faith is all about. Faith is you and I getting out of the driver's seat and turning your life over to God and saying, God, I'm going to let you lead me. God, I'm going to allow you to hold the steering wheel of my life. God, I'm going to let you guide my footsteps. I will not doubt. I will not waver. I will not shrink back no matter what I'm going through. Lord, I'm going to hold on to you because you are my almighty God. God, I put my complete trust in you for you will never disappoint me nor let me down. That's what faith is all about. And that's what the ancients were commended for. And that's what God wants us to be full of, to be a people who are full of faith. Faith is having the courage to let God have control. You know, the Bible goes on to say here in verse 6, and without faith, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God says without faith in him, it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. You can't please God without having the courage to let God have control in our lives. It's impossible. It's impossible. You cannot consider yourself a godly person if you don't have faith. It's impossible. You cannot be a hero in God's eyes if you don't have faith. It's impossible. God cannot take pleasure in you if you don't have faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Brothers and sisters, God is never pleased with us. He is never pleased with us when we are not exhibiting a faith and trust in God. However, God is never more pleased with us when he sees that our faith is on the edge. 
when we're on the edge of a struggle, when we're on the edge of a disappointment, when we're in the midst of the battle and say, Lord, I put my trust in you. Lord, I have no doubt that you're going to pull me through. God wants us to live our lives by faith. He wants us to live lives that are bold. He wants us to live lives that are courageous and zealous because we trust God. You know, God wants us to have big faith. God wants our faith to be sincere. God wants our faith to be genuine. God wants our faith to be daring. Why? Because it pleases God when we trust and do not doubt. God is looking for some faithful heroes. God wants us to be a people of faith here in South Cities. You know, Jesus always had a way of challenging people's faith. I'm reminded in Mark chapter 6, in verse 1, the Bible says Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that he's been given? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town among his relatives and in his home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Listen, I believe that God wants to work miracles in our lives. I also believe that God wants to do great things in our lives. But God cannot and he will not if we lack faith. If we have faith in him, there are no limits in what God can do through our lives. But a lack of faith stops God from being able to work through us. You know, I am convinced that he wants to. God wants to work through our lives. But the Bible says he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them because he was amazed at their lack of faith. Listen, a lack of faith cripples our walk with God. A lack of faith makes our Christianity stagnant. A lack of faith makes our Christianity dry and stale. A lack of faith leads us to a boring life. A lack of faith steals your spiritual security and peace, and it puts distance in your relationships with one another. A lack of faith can even lead to criticalness and cynicism and even bitterness. That's what a lack of faith can do. A lack of faith in God will also hinder us from being forgiven and forgiving those who hurt us. A lack of faith can also hold you back spiritually. A lack of faith keeps us from experiencing the Christian life to the full. You know, when I think about our faith in God, it reminds me about going to the amusement park. You know, my family and I, we love going to the amusement parks, whether it's Six Flags, uh, whether it's Bush Gardens, whether it's Universal Studios. I mean, there's nothing like being at an amusement park. And yet there's one ride that faith will not remind you of, and there is one ride that will remind you of faith. You know, that one ride that does not remind you of faith is the merry-go-round. I mean, all you do is pick your favorite little wooden horse. You get on it, and then you go around and around and around in a circle, and then you listen to that, that, that whimsical music that continues to play as you continue to go round and around and around. I mean, what a safe, comfortable 
easy ride. I mean, that ride doesn't remind you of anyone of genuine faith. That's not what it would be. But what would it be? The Christian life is like riding a roller coaster. A lot of people will not even go near it. You know why? Because it's so intimidating. You know, let me be honest with you. I don't like roller coasters, and roller coasters surely don't like me. You know, my excuse is when I see the roller coaster, when I see my wife and my sons, you know, wanting to go there and they're passionate and they're excited, hey, let's go on this roller coaster. Here's my excuse. Someone, someone has to be the designated photographer. Someone has to take pictures of the family on the ride. Someone has to be the designated purse holder. Someone has to be the designated person to hold the water bottles, and that's my job. But when God takes you up, and then God brings you down, and then he takes us up on that climb again. But you keep on trusting. Through all the jerking twists and turns, neck hurting, stomach all over the place, heart racing, fast speeds, and oftentimes you find your legs dangling in the air. And then he takes you back down again. But the whole time, the whole time you have to hold on for dear life because being in a relationship with God makes it all worthwhile. But Larry, how do you jumpstart your faith? How does one see their faith get revived? How does one see their faith be reawakened? I have just one principle for you this morning. And that one principle is simply this. You got to hear the right thing. You got to hear the right thing. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, the Bible says, consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. You know, we talk about this scripture often, but it's still a struggle for far too many Christians. It's a simple challenge to be in the word of God every single day. Consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of God. You have to read the word. You have to feed the word. And you have to live on the word of God. It reminds me of Jesus when he was tempted by Satan for 40 days and 40 nights. He says in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, he says, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word, every word that comes from the mouth of God. You see, the way you revive and wake up your faith when it is getting weak, you got to get in the word of God and you have to stay in the word of God. You know, this past midweek, I shared with you about some personal decisions that I'm making to re-energize, to reawaken my own personal faith. You know, I'm getting up and I'm out of the house now by 5 a.m. And let me tell you something, it is not easy. You know, as I leave, I see my bed and my bed is still trying to talk to me. Come back to bed, you were enjoying this sleep. But I gotta get up. You know, the Bible says Jesus got up very early in the morning and he left the house to get time with his God. I am lengthening the quality and the quantity of my time with God. In fact, I made a decision to read my Bible for one hour every day. Why? I need this discipline in my life. If I can watch a basketball game for two hours, I surely can read my Bible for one hour. That's the only way that I will make it. You know, one of the lessons that I'm learning about God's word is that when I compare myself to people in the Bible and what people in the Bible went through, you know, to what I'm personally going through, it puts me in the right perspective. 
you know, what I consider challenging in comparison to what some of the great men and women of the Bible went through, my oh my, it puts me to shame. You know, they were people of faith. Yes, they were flawed. Yes, they made mistakes. But man alive, their faith in God was huge. If you're going to see your own faith in God be revitalized, I want to challenge you this morning that you've got to get back in the word of God. My question to you this morning is, who are you listening to? And what are you listening to? And are you in the word of God daily? Or are you allowing God to speak to you? on a daily basis. I don't know how we can make it through a day without hearing the voice of God in our lives. There's far too much heartache and trouble out there. There's way too many temptations out there not to hear from the voice of God. There's much too craziness out there. There are too many people out there who are trying to pull us off our faith. We got to get back in the Bible so that you and I can hear what God has to say to our lives. If you want to wake up your faith, if you want to see your faith get revitalized, let me tell you something. Get serious about the Word of God. You know, when I think of someone who's serious about the Word of God, it reminds me of the psalmist in Psalm 119. In verse 164 through 165, the Bible says seven times a day, I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. You know, the psalmist here was serious when it came down to the word of God. He says seven times a day. Seven times, I praise you for your righteous laws. But I want you to notice the two benefits that came from that serious approach, hearing from the word of God. The first benefit, great peace have those who love your law. And the second benefit, nothing can make them stumble. You know, we need to embrace that scripture. We need to get serious about the word of God. How do you stay faithful? Not by depending upon men, not by depending upon women. You got to know your word. You got to be in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, we often tell other people that we are a people of the Bible, that the Bible is our standard for life. You know, one of the first studies we take individuals to go through is the Word of God. And one of the, the questions at the end, are you willing to make the Bible your standard for living? However, we need to be a people who live it. We need to be a people who read it and not just talk it and not just think it. You know, what's wrong with us folks? We can't even discipline ourselves to read our Bible every single day. Let me tell you something, Satan is working overtime. Satan is working overtime. The devil has been very busy lately. He works long hours, and let me tell you something, he never gets tired. He works long hours to do what? To keep you and I from reading our Bibles. You know, it reminds me of the first soil in the parable of the talents. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4 and verse 15, some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. The Bible says as soon as they hear the word of God, what happens? Satan snatches that word away. You know, the devil doesn't want you and I to be in the word of God every single day. You know, if you found yourself not being in the word of God, let me tell you something. Satan got you. Because he knows that if you're not in the word of God, what will happen? Your faith in God is going to get very weak. And, if you're, and then you're not going to know how to overcome those struggles. You're not going to know how to obtain that victory in your life. You know, we need to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I need to read my Bible. 
But sometimes what we say is, I know I need to read my Bible, but let me do this first. Well, then lunchtime comes, and then we say, well, you know, I'll read my Bible during lunch. Lunchtime passes. And then we say, well, I'll read my Bible when I go home from work. And then we go home from work. We plop on the couch. We find ourselves sitting on the couch, and then we say, well, I'll read my Bible once my TV program goes off, or I'll read my Bible when I stop checking my Instagram page. And then you tell yourself, I'll read it before I go to bed. And then you pull out your Bible while you're laying down in your bed with your head on the pillow, and you know, you know what happens next. And then it's the next morning. And that whole cycle can continue while Satan is laughing behind the scenes, working overtime to keep you and I from reading our Bibles. And the more we're not in the Word of God, what happens to our faith? It gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. We need to make a decision before you do anything else that when you get up out of that bed, read your Bible and say, Lord, speak to me today. You gave me a new day and I need some great time with you. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to my heart. I would encourage you, discipline yourself because the devil is working so hard to keep you from doing so. And on top of that, he knows the scriptures more than you and I do. You know, if you're watching our service online this morning, and you're interested to know more about our great God, and you want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, get in the Word. Get in a Bible study. I mean, put, put, a, a, you know, put, put yourself in the chat right now and just say, I need someone to study the Bible with me. Let me tell you something. The devil is going to work so hard to keep you from studying the Bible. He'll fill your mind with excuses. He'll try to discourage you, but you got to get radical. Now is the time to get to know God while we still have time left to do so. You know, I'm so inspired by this young man, this young teenager, his name is Rick Joseph. And when I think about Rick, I think of a young teen who's very serious. He wanted to know God in a personal way. So what did he do? He started studying the Bible with Phil Arsenal and so many other teens in our region. And the more he studied, the stronger his faith became. One day he realized, you know what, I'm going to get baptized. He got baptized. And let me tell you something, God has commended this young man for his faith. I'm going to challenge you today. Get in the Word of God and read your Bible every single day this week. Can you do that? Can you read your Bible starting tomorrow? And then on Tuesday, you read your Bible. And then on Wednesday, you get into the Word. And then on Thursday, you feed on it. And then on Friday, you eat it. And then on Saturday, you're still on it. And then on Sunday, you are still feeding on the Word of God. That's the only way your faith is going to be revived. And God says he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And that's what the ancients were commended for in the book of Hebrews. They were men and women of faith. In conclusion, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through verse, 2 through verse 13, the Bible says, For the word of God is living and active, full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person. And both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him with whom we have to give account. Listen, the word of God is powerful. The Bible says it's like a sword. It will cut you up. You know, the Bible is like a mirror. 
It reveals, it has a wonderful way of, of showing you and I what we really look like. The Bible is a seed. One little seed planted can lead to thousands of seeds that multiply. The Bible is like milk that nourishes. The Bible is like a light that shines its way through all sorts of darkness. The Bible is a fire it consumes. The Bible is like a hammer that shatters. Listen, God's word is powerful. Have you lost your fire this morning? Have you become lifeless? Have you found yourself not having any joy? Are you hearing what God has to say to you? Listen, I've never, never heard God say, give up. I've never heard God say, you can't do this. I've never heard God say, that won't happen or can't happen. I never heard God say, well, it's too late or you messed up so bad that you can't come to me now. But I do hear God say, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. I do hear God say, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible to you. I do hear my God say, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I do hear God say, everything is possible for him who believes. God is looking for some modern day heroes. God is looking for a people who he can do miracles through. Get in the word of God and allow God to speak to you and change you. Let's get excited about this new summer sermon series called Heroes of the Faith. To God be the glory. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. <laughs> Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Amen. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Thank you, Lord. I won't fear. I won't fear. People of God, sing hallelujah. me he always guides me Ooh, through mountains and valleys through mountains and valleys now sing his joy is refreshing his joy is refreshing amen it restores my soul restores my soul now sing this next part with confidence. Mercy and goodness. Mercy.
everybody sing your spirit your spirit lives within so me so i will walk in so your peace so i will walk in your say it again peace. your spirit your spirit lives within now my me. victory my victory my victory, my victory. in prayer for the communion. Father in heaven, thank you so much for loving us and loving the world like you do. Father, the Bible says you loved us so much that you were willing to give your son up for us. And Father, we are so grateful that Jesus was obedient to you and that he was willing to go to a cross, die, shed his blood, but Father, what we're most excited about was the fact that three days later, you raised your beloved son from the grave. So Father, as we take this communion here this morning, help us to reflect upon that incredible sacrifice. And Father, as we reflect, as we think about, as we get ourselves ready for this upcoming week, Father, I pray that you will give us strength. The strength that you had to raise your son from that tomb, I pray for supernatural strength this week. Father, for us to be a people who get back into the word of God, who listen to you, who hear you. And the more we listen to you and the more we hear you, the more you'll change us. Father, reawaken our faith in Jesus today. Thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Rob Gomes, and I just want to say that that was such a powerful sermon. Thank you so much, Larry. And I know I'm inspired, and I'm really excited to get into this new series of Heroes of the Faith. This is the portion of the service where we give our contribution. And I, I have a quick scripture that I would like to share with you this morning. In Mark chapter 12, this is a very, very powerful story. In verse 41, Mark 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. You know, COVID-19 has really um, exposed a lot of things in this world and in our lives, and, and it's been a challenging time. It's been a very challenging time, and I think one of the things that's really 
uh, has been a challenge for us has been finances. And I love scriptures like this, where we have an opportunity to give. And Jesus isn't looking for the most charismatic giver out there. I, I love that it says that he watched from afar and he called his disciples and said, look, look, I, I need you to see this. Her, out of her poverty, out of the little that she has, gave with all her heart. And I want to encourage all of us this morning to give with our hearts. Uh, it doesn't matter how much. The, the quantity, God is not taking tally of that. But to give with all our hearts, that will catch God's attention and thus will bless it. And so uh, go, with me, uh, go with me to God and uh, let's pray for our contribution this morning. Father in heaven, uh, thank you so much that you are a God who gives tremendously to us. You gave us your son and that was everything to you. And you, you happily and gladly and, and mercifully gave us your son. And, and the little that we can do, God, is give right back to you. So, Father, I pray that this morning that our giving is from our hearts, that we don't try to quantify, that we don't try to overextend or 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 even be worried but to know that whatever it is that we can give will be blessed by you father thank you so much for all that you've done it's in jesus name i pray all of these things amen if you want to give online you can go to give.bostonchurch.org if you'd like to give by check uh, the address is 214 concord street Framingham, Massachusetts, 01702. All this information is in the description of this video. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are having our midweek service at 7 o'clock this Tuesday by Family Group. And on Sunday, we're back in the same format by YouTube and Facebook. And I hope you all will uh, be part of our worship service again. And um, have a great week. If you like today's service, please like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can also follow us on Instagram at South Cities BCOC. And then also, if you'd like to connect with us because you live in the South Shore area, please feel free to fill out a connect card. You'll find it in the link and description below. Thank you once again so much for being with us this morning. Have a great week. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never failed me. And in all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I love your voice you have led me through the fire And in darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father And I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I'm able And I will sing 
of the goodness of God. And what I lack, you are full of. And where I'm broken, you are whole. And what I'm doubting, you are sure of. I'll trust the lover, the lover of my soul. And what I lack, you are full of. And where I'm broken, you are whole. And what I'm doubting, you are sure of. I'll trust the lover, the lover of my soul. I'll trust the lover, the lover of my 